Hello and welcome back to Let's Code Physics. Uh, we are continuing in our series on the traffic light dilemma. This is that, uh, that predicament we all find ourselves in from time to time where we are at just that right distance from a traffic light where it turns yellow and uh, we are not sure whether it's better to continue on through the intersection uh, or to slam on the brakes and possibly end up in the intersection anyway. Uh, we are going to study this using a code in vPython. Uh, we've currently set up the code uh, so that we've got two cars named Cook and Ninja. Thank you to our subscribers for subscribing. Um, they are going to start at the same point. They're going to start 250 feet away from the beginning of an intersection. The intersection is represented as a white square. In fact, I can even show you over here. Um, so they're going to be beginning uh, over on this side. Oh, good. Um, they are going to be beginning over on this side and proceeding at a constant velocity of 45 miles per hour or 66 feet per second uh, from, the, uh, from their starting point here over to here. Uh, we've successfully created the code so that they uh, move at a, at a constant velocity. Uh, since they're starting at the same point and have the same velocity, they're going to reach the end of the intersection at the same time. So what we're going to add in now is we're going to add in the traffic light. And the traffic light is going to change color from green to yellow to red to signal them to stop. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a traffic light. I'm just going to reference my notes on the size of this thing here because I don't want it to appear ridiculous, you know, because those totally look like cars. Um, so we're going to make a traffic light and this thing is going to be a cylinder. VPython has all these great shapes preloaded. Um, there's even a, a cone shape that I found recently that might be showing up in another special episode coming up in the future. Spoiler. That's not really a spoiler. That's a teaser. Okay, teaser. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put this thing at the beginning of the traffic light. So that's at x equals zero at the beginning of the traffic light. We're going to put it at the beginning of the intersection. That's at x equals zero. We're going to put it up above the cars. So that's going to be 20 feet up in the air. Um, which, by the way, I was driving one night and saw somebody up on a on a cherry picker working on a traffic light. I had never realized how huge traffic lights are until I saw a human body standing up next to one. And the thing's really tall. You don't notice that because the angle that you're looking at. It's kind of nuts. And we're going to put this thing back a little ways at z equals negative 100. Uh, so this is going to be at the, uh, this should be at the front left corner of the intersection from our perspective. Um, and in order to specify the cylinder, we've got to give it an axis, meaning telling it what direction to point. So we're going to make this thing point 10 units in the x direction and 0 and 0 in the x and y. So it's going to be coming out at the uh, cars, just like in real life. And we need to give this thing a radius, radius. And we're going to give it a radius of, say, 10. And its initial color, of course, is going to be green, because as these two drivers are approaching the intersection um, the traffic light color is going to be green. I think I have all my commas in there. So let's run the code. Did I successfully get a traffic light where I wanted it? Okay, so here's the traffic light. So these two see a green light. They are continuing to go through. Uh, no problems there. So now here comes the interesting part. The interesting part is that we have to, or we have to program in uh, that the traffic will, that the traffic light will change colors and that Cook will react accordingly. So the first thing let's do is get in the change of traffic light color and then we'll worry about Cook's reaction. Okay, so, uh, so let's see. So the first thing I want to do is I want to define a distance at which the, um, the light's going to turn yellow. So basically these two are going to be going forward and it's going to turn yellow when they're a certain distance away. That's not how real traffic lights work, at least not to my knowledge. Uh, but that's that's the dilemma that, that we often find ourselves faced with is that the light turns yellow and we're at a distance where we don't know whether we should stop or continue going. So I was thinking of using a D yellow, uh, meaning distance at which the, the traffic light turns yellow of let's say 100 feet. So when they're 100 feet away, uh, in other words, the, the same length as the intersection, they need to decide whether they're going to keep going or whether they're going to stop. And then, of course, I need a time limit on that yellow light. I need a time for the traffic light to turn from yellow to red. So we're going to call that T red for uh, for time for it to turn red. And let's be let's be uh, let's see the usual uh, value uh, that I looked up earlier. 
is uh, for a 45 mile an hour road, for most cases, the yellow light is set for 4.2 seconds. Let's make it an even four for right now. Um, that's I'm trying to think if that's, I, th I think the traffic lights in Jacksonville are a little bit shorter than that. I could be wrong. Um, I, I have not measured them. Okay, so we've got those two values set up. Now we need to set up within the loop some conditions for when the traffic light is going to change color. So everything about Cook and Ninja's position is going to stay the same for right now. Um, so we want to think about, okay, I want this thing to change to turn yellow when they have crossed the 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 the, the D yellow mark when they are D yellow away from the uh, from the intersection. So what I really want to think about is if the difference between their X position. So originally they're traveling at the same speed. So let's use Ninja since Ninja is going to be going at the same velocity uh, regardless. If his distance from the beginning of the intersection is less than D yellow. Now I've got myself in a little bit of a mathematical predicament here because this is starting out at negative something and or negative 250 was that it where did these guys start out yeah these guys start out at negative 250 these drivers excuse me these drivers start out at negative 250 uh and the intersection begins at zero um so there's a question of do i want to have one minus the other or the second one minus the first one the answer to that problem is always make it an absolute value right because that's what you really care about is the difference between them the 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 actual magnitude of the distance between them being less than something so if it's less than d yellow okay now i don't want it to be running this every single time it goes through the code meaning i i do want it to be able to turn red soon so here's another condition i can add in is if the light is still green so if light color equals the color green so in other words uh what i want Python to check here is if the light's color, so whenever you put, an, whenever you name an object something, so I named this cylinder light, um, whenever I put dot something, I'm saying I want to check the attribute of that uh, of that object. In other words, it's not going to worry about the position, it's not going to be the axis or the radius, it's only going to look at the thing's color. So if that thing equals color.green, um, and the way vPython distinguishes a statement execution from a truth test is the double equal sign. So you can check out my coding insights video. Uh, this is not an equal sign uh, for the difference between a statement execution and a check of a truth test. Um, so if that equals green, I want it to change its color to yellow. So light.color equals the color yellow. Okay. Uh, so that way, if it hasn't turned yellow, let it, yellow yet, yellow let. If it hasn't turned yellow let, yellow yet, then it will. Okay. So what I need to put in next is I need to begin to think about, okay, so now I've got it to where it'll turn yellow. Now I need to think about when do I want it to turn red? Well, I want it to turn red when the time is two seconds after, excuse me, is four seconds after it turns uh, yellow. So what I want to do here is I want to say, okay, I need a time where it goes from the current time to the uh, to that far ahead to to t red seconds into the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, whatever, take whatever the current time is, add t red to it, and call that t red. Okay, cool. So if so, we're still under the condition if uh, Ninja has has. Uh, is, is is less than D yellow away from the beginning of the intersection, then I want you to check if the light is green, do this. If the light is not green, meaning if it's still yellow, so this is the elif command, this is uh, the else if, meaning if that doesn't work, check this, uh, check this condition, check if the time is greater than T red, because that's when I would want the light to be turning red. And so in that case, I'm gonna say light.color equals the color red. And then let's see, by taking away the indent down here, we exit the if state, we exit the if block. And basically, if this thing hasn't happened, the code isn't going to do anything different. If neither of these things has happened yet, the code isn't going to do anything different. It's going to keep it yellow. So we should have one change to yellow when they get 100 feet away, and then another change to red four seconds after that. Uh, so let's check, well, four seconds in the simulation, right? It's not necessarily four seconds in real time. So let's check this here. Let's run the code. So what we should see now is we should see a change from green to yellow to red. Let's run the code. All right, we've got our 
Green light. All right, we have yellow light, and four seconds later. Okay, so the thing never turned red because they had plenty of time to get through. So for the purposes of testing this, I'm gonna make this a really mean yellow light. I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna turn on my num lock, and then I'm gonna make this a one second yellow light. We're gonna make this really mean. So let's run the program. So we go from green to yellow to red. All right, cool, wonderful, wonderful, okay. Uh, let's leave this thing, actually, no, let's leave this thing at two, because that four seconds was obviously, you know, plenty of space, plenty of time for them to clear the, uh, for them to clear the intersection. Cool. So we've got our traffic light changing color. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to change the motion of the cars. I want to set it up so that when Cook sees that the light is yellow, then he is going to slow down. Now, he should also be slowing down if the light is red, right? So as long as the light is not green, he needs to be slowing down. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to modify his velocity up here. So we're going to say if the light color does not equal green. So to say not equals, you do a exclamation mark and an equals, so sort of like a slash and an equals, but they're just separated since I don't have a not equal to key on my keyboard, unfortunately. So if the light color is not green, then Cook's velocity, uh, Cook underscore velocity, is going to be his current velocity minus his acceleration uh, let's see, I should define Cook acceleration up above times dt. So I need to define Cook's acceleration up here. So Cook Excel is equal to a vector, and we're going to have that be 10, 0, 0. And now I'm potentially going to confuse myself. I'm just going to put the negative here and make it an addition here just to be consistent with the rest of the, with the, rest of the coding. Um, students often ask me, is, is, do I say negative g or g equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared? And I say, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you have one negative at the end of the day. Um, okay, so if the light is not green, Cook is going to change his acceleration this way. Now, I also need to check whether Cook has come to a stop. Because if Cook has come to a stop, I don't want him rolling backwards. So what we'll do there is, let's see... Um, Oh, I know what to do. Uh, let's have it be that if uh, cook velocity.x is less than zero, then make cook's velocity.x equal to zero, because cook won't be slowing, he won't be, you know, he's, he's not going to throw it into reverse and back away from the intersection. Uh, he might, depending on how far he is into the intersection, but we're just gonna have him come to a stop. So what I've done is I've said, if the light's color doesn't equal green, then Cook is going to uh, begin decelerating. So he's, we're going to apply this acceleration. His acceleration is in the negative x direction. Uh, if Cook's velocity in the x direction is less than zero, then if, if that makes him, him start to roll back, then we're just going to say, no, his velocity is zero. Okay, so what we should see happen now is Ninja, Ninja should continue through uh, as if there as if there were no uh, uh, traffic light with no regard for the law, uh, and Cook is going to break at 10 feet per second squared. And again, we've changed this T red to two seconds uh, just for the purposes of demonstration. So we're going to hit F5 and see what happens. Okay, here they're matching velocities. Light turns yellow, Cook slows down. Cook has not slowed down enough. So in this scenario, it looks like Ninja made the right decision. Cook did not make the right decision. Well, or at least he made a less good decision. Well, I mean, he's, he, he should probably just, you know, accelerate at this point. Okay, so uh, we've set it up to where we've got a traffic light that changes color. We've got Cook and Ninja responding or not responding accordingly. And so in the next episode, we're going to start playing around with the values of the point at which the traffic light turns yellow, the point at which traffic light turns red, Cook's acceleration, all these things so we can find out is there a scenario where neither of them can win. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.